Hi there, and welcome to the ATS Podcast with me, Will Brown, and John Soulsby, where we break down chunks of health and fitness information into bite-sized pieces, remove a bunch of the noise, and just leave what's relevant. Uh, today on the podcast, we are on episode number 10, and we are talking about which is the best diet? Which is the new hot diet you should be doing? Uh, but first, and much more fun, uh, we're going to get into the off-topic, which is our favourite food and why. Yeah, um, so favourite food and why is, is easy. <clears throat> Pizza's number one. Ooh, solid choice. I'm going to have to think it, of something like... different. <laughs> oh, no. No, you don't have to think of anything different. It could just be pizza. That can be it. If it's number one, it's number one. It's just it's irrelevant. Yeah, it's like there are no, there are no, there are no hard yeses and no. Like there are optimals and suboptimals in health and fitness. There's usually multiple ways to skin a cat, but pizza is yeah. the best food, absolutely objectively. Hands, anyone, hands down. <laughs> anyone who is says something else is subjective is objectively wrong. Yeah, yeah. you can have breakfast pizza. It's true. Dessert pizza, regular pizza. So in in some in some aspect of providing value to this podcast, one pro tip that people might not be aware of is if you are reheating pizza or if you have leftover pizza, if you put a small vessel of water, like an egg cup or a ramekin or something else, yeah. in the microwave with the pizza you're reheating, it boil it like the microwaves heat up the water in the cup and don't just dehydrate fuck out your leftover pizza. So you get yeah stringy cheese and the crust bounces back so it's not like a weaponized thing you could kill somebody with i'm usually super lazy i just kind of throw water out of the pizza and then throw it in oh Which yeah kind of, kind of half doesn't really work but also kind of does you can also do it on in a pan if you reheat was, or just to heat but best way of cooking pizza at home without like a uni pizza oven is frying pan yeah hands down you reheat it in the pan and you do like the the same thing you could do when you melt cheese on burgers where like if you chuck the cheese on the already cooked burger and scoosh a bunch of water on, into the really hot pan and then put a bowl over it or something and it just traps all the condensation and just like keeps everything really moist um so, <clears throat> quickly for those that don't know the frying pan method because it's a game changer is whack up your grill to full, pan as hot as it goes, throw pizza in. It can be pre-bought or homemade. Crisp the bottom, chuck it under the grill for two minutes. Done. Easy peasy. So easy. What's and another? It will be the best pizza. I think the uh, one of the cut friendly ways I like getting away with pizza if I'm in a calorie deficit is essentially taking one slice of leftover and chopping it up with kitchen scissors and putting it into like an omelette. Oh yeah, that's quite. That's a bit of a sneaky one, because then you also don't have to worry about putting extra stuff in your omelette, because your pizza probably had toppings on it. Yeah, <clears throat> which is pretty good. Um, another of my favorite foods. I'm like genuinely just a favorite, a, a fan of any food that is either contained in something edible, or can just be eaten with hands. I feel yeah. like that is. Maybe I'm just a true primitive, but, but like that is <laughs> that is the way I feel like food is best enjoyed. Like burritos, forget about it. Like they're great. They literally come yeah. wrapped in other food, and are so you can eat the container. You occasionally have to deal with a bit of foil you have to peel, which is probably why they're not the best. Pizza, easy. You literally don't even need to slice it. You can just tear into it. Um. Yeah, Mexican food in general is good for that. Tacos as well. Oh, that. tacos. I forgot. I don't know how I forgot about tacos. I haven't been to El Cartel in ages. Yeah. Nachos. I think it's a one. <clears throat> Nacho, apparently, Nacho there's a, good. apparently there's a really good, more authentic Mexican place on Coburn Street. Oh, yeah? For real? I, I haven't tried it yet, so who knows. But mm. yeah. I've walked past it, and it looks like fairly authentic. So that's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, right, we better get one of the. Di we would literally do the whole fucking episode about <laughs> our favorite yeah. foods, right? Which is the best diet? Um, this pizza. <laughs> yeah, pizza is the best diet. <laughs> uh, uh, we kind of alluded to it earlier in that there are optimal and suboptimal things in fitness. Like you have to kind of tread the line. In, for example, a lot of popular fitness information stuff is very anti-restrictive but in 
at least my personal opinion, given that we aren't currently dealing with a national health crisis of people under-eating, I'm going to say that's a lot more specific to people who are already in the fitness industry and just kind of have problems with disordered eating and overdoing things and going too much in the other direction. Yeah. I think there is very much a need for restrained eating and not making emotional driven food choices. What I mean by that is essentially not just letting your emotions dictate what, what, how, and when you eat. Uh, and if you're not sure, to have a think <laughs> and like think about what you last ate and why, or just pay attention to what you next eat and why and see how it goes. Um, <clears throat> I don't think there is any one specific diet because diets are largely individual. It depends on, I mean, number one, what food you like. <laughs> like a diet full of food you don't like is really not going to be good. Yeah. Um, this topic's like always really frustrating because you kind of get into the vein of when people are asking what the be best diet is, they usually mean like Atkins or that sort of thing. Mm. Like, they're inherently kind of pish. Because it's just like, just don't eat this thing. You're like, great, great. How helpful. Yeah, or but they, they do work for some people. Coffee. Yeah, they do work for some... They're just kind of coy as well. Um, and you don't necessarily need to be on, like, something as regimented as, like, not eating carbs ever. Mm -hmm. You can just, like... As you're saying, just what what did you last eat and why? Um, I know I'm really bad for... Is effectively, if I'm looking to diet, I know I'm really bad for if I buy, like, chocolate, for example, I'll just smash the whole thing without really thinking. Oh yeah, the Chris the Christmas method. Yeah, all um, all chocolate received needs to be eaten immediately. Yeah, exactly. So I need to be really conscious just to not bother buying. Yeah, and I I don't know if this is going to be. It see it, it seems how well in quite a few things. A lot of opinions will be kind of polarized and swing from one side to the other, but very few land in the middle. Yeah. I'm not going to say this is broadly applied to absolutely everything, but like, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if someone smarter than me figured out that it was. Um. Yeah, like the... The best diet is the one that you find success with and isn't going to cause you any additional long-term stress. Like, dieting is a short-term process. Like, people, some people don't even like that word, diet. Like, they think it's just... Like, yeah. it, it, in my mind, I still work it as, like, a set amount of time where you aim to, like restrict yourself in some minor way like restrict your calorie intake and or increase your non-exercise activity level for a certain amount of time in order to elicit a body change usually a reduction in body weight and or improvement in body composition yep, pretty on. i don't think that like number one i think keeping that kind of transient is better if you just want to I think if you're out to develop a better relationship with food, eating, and how you feel about yourself, I don't really think that's a diet. I think that's just like no. a kind of, I guess, like a mental health intervention, like with dietary components. That sounds like above my pay grade kind of stuff, but like... It does, yeah. I wouldn't really, like, I don't think <laughs> you can really go through... Oh, I suppose you do. Like... <clears throat> Yeah, having like a yeah, it's it, they're they're definitely not the same thing. I think a lot of, I think stig, uh, yeah, I think the the word diet's been stigmatized a lot. Um, I still think it's reasonably applicable. I think most people who have struggled long term with uh, emotionally driven food behaviors, <clears throat> um, struggling with their weight, like being really unhappy with their body stuff. Like um, how they feel about themselves, their their weight, how they look, whatever. Uh, genuinely, kind of 
it's kind of well received when it's a short term transient thing. Like, yeah, you're not looking to kind of reinvent the wheel and you have to redo everything. You're just kind of looking at a short term. And that can be even be like, you can see all reprogress in just like five weeks. Yeah, like the the length, I think one of the most successful lengths of kind of calorie deficits, like, and it isn't aggressive, it's like, I think the rate of loss you're usually looking at is like between a quarter and a half of a kilo a week is like seven weeks. Mm -hmm. Like, seven weeks really isn't that much. No. And you don't actually have to restrict yourself too much. No. The quarter to a half. Yeah, like, even if you do... You're not going to be, like, super... Yeah, it's not going to be the most miserable time of your life. You're just not going yeah. to, like, completely go off... Like, you're just not going to eat whatever you want, essentially, for seven weeks. And genuinely, like, restricting that kind of thing. I think the the thing that a lot of people will struggle with the most is maintenance. Which is where yeah. that, like, food behavior stuff comes back into it in a big way. Because you aren't in a deficit... Like, you have no goal. Your Your, your goal is essentially just to stay the same. <laughs> yeah. And so I think then, yeah, it's mentally very easy to be like, ah, screw it, I'll slip. do X, because like, it doesn't matter, I'm not actually trying to lose weight. Yeah, you're, then, the slippage. Yeah, and then lo and behold, five weeks later, you're back to where you started. I think that's really where a lot of people who are looking to change body composition can fall down. Is it, It's like a classic in... Kind of what we talk about is making sure everything's sustainable. Yeah, but like, a, yeah, so like a calorie deficit in, in a quote unquote dietary phase isn't sustainable. That's the whole point. No. Yeah. Um, it is transient, it is temporary, it does stop. Uh, the maintenance part can be sustainable. That's kind of what I guess that's why it's called maintenance. Like, you maintain. Yeah. But like, I usually just a kid, like, I talk about it like we talk about money mainly because people also don't like talking about money but it's something that's super fucking important and like I think the lack of people talking about it is why it's a bit taboo and a bit like ooh but like uh, yep, totally. you, you don't exactly plan to save for a holiday by not like if you're like okay cool like I want to buy I don't know X thing I'm gonna sub out buying my everyday Starbucks or Costa coffee that's several pounds which over the course of eight or twelve weeks is going to mean I save this much money. Like that doesn't mean that you're some sort of weird frugal hermit that like permanently lives with the heating off and eats only cold soup. Like you're just taking a temporary like intervention to like delay a bit of gratification and get something that you want at the end of it. You're just making. Yeah. You're just like putting off the what I want now for what I for something bigger I want in X time. Yeah, and I think as well, especially there, you're saying like you're doing it as in a money example for a holiday. It's like funny how quickly stuff just becomes habitual, like say a daily Starbucks, for example. And you're kind of like, do I actually even enjoy this, or is this just like what I do? Oh, 100%. Like, I think a lot of food behavior stuff is habitual. That's why it's like that, that kind of falls under that emotional. Um, yeah. driven food behaviors isn't that like loads of people will just eat like they'll fucking grab like a coffee and four biscuits and sit and watch Netflix of an afternoon or an evening after work just because that's what they do and you're like you don't even want that like you just do it because you've done it every day this month yeah and like that's the exact same thing with me as I say smashing like a whole chocolate bar I, half the time I get to the end I'm like why did I even do that like what I just you get to the end like I didn't even enjoy that that much that's just like half a habit that I have right I think one of the one of the big things I heard recently for what to kind of watch out for where it determ or it's like mildly determinant of if you actually do want a thing is that you do not care about the amount yeah like you're not like I'm going to eat a couple, like, I'm literally going to get a digestive with my coffee because I really want one. Usually that one is just fine. But the habitual nature and hyperpalatability of specifically digestives will probably mean that you eat, like, two to four. <laughs> 
but like you don't need two to four. You only really want one. I agree. If you do, yeah. If you do, if you do want it, the um. <clears throat> oh, what was the other point? I just had it in my head and it's gone. Ah. Yeah, I know. Um. Ah, nah, can't remember it. Oh, I'm sure it'll come back. Um, future episode. Future future episode. Shit, we forgot. <laughs> uh, but yeah, to summarize, the best diet is the one that works for you and gets you where you want to go. Like, if you have success in a certain structure and it works for you without being too deleterious to, like, I mean, your long-term health for a start, uh, both physical and mental, it's probably fine. Like... If you're unsure if it's good or if you're just like huffing the copium, just like it's the only thing that's worked, so I'm sticking to it because I can't like dream of not succeeding. Have have a think about like what it makes you do if it's super over restrictive and if you typically rebound really hard. Because <laughs> if you rebound real hard, chances are it's not a very good protocol for you. And you should probably try to get a different, more supportive structure. You might even need to see a mental health professional about food behaviors and emotional driven actions and how you feel about food and all kinds of stuff. It gets wacky, wild, and all tied in all sorts of places. Yep. Bang on. 